So this video is going to be a combination of showing the process and trying to cover what I'm doing as I'm going. I have a few of these the making of videos on my channel, but this one I'm going to try and make more of a guide built in. So I want to, this is the image I'm going to use. The first step is figuring out what you want to add to the image. I just want character movement, and then I'm probably going to add snow. She's in a Arctic environment. So, you know, we'll have snow blowing, maybe some wind, and then the little parts moving, her hair moving, stuff like that. Uh, I'll try and cover different ways of cutting out images and uh, separating things. And all of the boring parts will hopefully be sped up. So the first step is deciding what you want. Like I said, I want these things to move, these purple things. I want her arms to move. And then uh, everything else is pretty much just doable with the shake tools. So you just have to decide where you want to cut your uh, the image. So right now I'm starting with a single image loaded into Photoshop. I'm just going to make some very broad cuts I want these little purple things. They're going to be on their own layer. Actually, there's going to be two of them. I'll separate that later. So we're just going to cut out that. And we're going to cut out this. We're going to cut out this. And we're just going to control J and make a backup copy. So that's just a very broad, quick selection cut. We'll refine everything afterwards, because we're going to have to go back in and, um, I don't want to say fix, because there's nothing wrong with the image, but we have to repair the damage that we're doing to it. So the second cut I'm going to make, I don't even have to be this precise, I'm going to cut out her arm, so Control J, duplicate her back arm, and then I want her bow and her front arm. So I kind of don't want to deal with cutting out her shoulder. So you can actually cut anywhere and then just repair the seam of the cut later. It doesn't, it won't actually make a difference and I'll show you that when I get to it. So I'm actually just going to cut her arm off right across the elbow. And then I want this section to be on its own layer. And again, we will refine all of these cuts. And that is part of her bow. We're going to go around the bow. Control J, make a copy of the bow. And then we need a cutout of the character. And I'm going to, we're going to repair this cut here, but I'm going to cut a little bit outside of that so that there's overlap that we can work with. Uh, we don't need that, so I'm going to come in here, and there, and we have our character. So the only other layer we need, I'm actually going to uh, duplicate this. So this layer I'm never going to touch. This is my, I did something and I need a backup. This bottom layer is my backup layer. This is eventually going to be the filled in background, but in order to get the background selection. The easiest way to do that is just cut out your entire character and then you can control shift click a layer and select it. So I can just select all of those layers. But once I once I cut these out it'll make the selection of the actual character. So I can skip that step. Um, but realistically we're just going to be smudging or content aware filling the background in because that is the easiest way. So smudge would just be like this, just magically erase the image. It's not very precise, it's not very high resolution, but it's what we're working with, because I am not an artist. And that's uh, what we do. So the rest of this is going to cut into stream footage that is probably going to be sped up, where I actually do all of this. And hopefully this comes together. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is separate these four little purple ribbons and put them all on their own layer, and then cut them all out with the pen tool by tracing around them and using uh, masks to remove the background that's still kind of there. 
uh, I will be adding them all back into, well, I'll be adding three of them back into the same layer because they're far enough apart that they won't interact with each other. There is one that's on the left that will kind of go in behind and it'll be on its own layer, but I'll cover that later. Next, I am refining the cut of the back arm. So same thing, going around the edge with the pen tool. I just need to get a clean selection of just the arm and then I can work on it from there. And once I have the arm cut out, I can use a combination of another mask and the smudge tool to kind of reshape and redraw the part that's missing. So you don't have to be perfect with this. Everything I'm drawing in here is just going to be behind the character, so you'd only ever see it for a split second if it happens to move. Uh, it's just there so that if it happens to move, you won't notice a big hard cut. It will look like, you know, that part of the arm actually existed. Almost all of this is done with the smudge tool, just pushing around what's already there, trying to fill in the area that's cut out. Uh, there is one section here that I'm doing with the clone stamp tool. I want to extend this quilted pattern up into behind the body, just in case it happens to move that much. I don't know if it will, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So this next part I'm going to speed up a little bit more because it's exactly the same thing again. I'm just refining the edge, going around the bow arm with the pen tool to make a clean cutout, and then I'll go around the edge, smudging the edge into um, the locked alpha layer. Uh, I'll cover that in a second, or coming up. Um, it's just to make the edge a bit cleaner. And then we're on to the last layer. So I have to cut out the parts that are in front, which is essentially just the bow, and then cut around the character layer. So same as the other ones, just make a clean selection with the pen tool, go all the way around your character, and then you can have your last cutout. There will be a bit of rebuilding on this layer because there are parts that are taken out from in front, um, but we'll get to them when we do. I'm going to make a slightly strange cut around the character's hair because I'm going to use a different technique to remove the hair from the background. So the hair in this image is partially transparent and you can kind of see the background through it. So actually the easiest way for me to cut this out is to use a color selection, which might go by really quickly, but essentially I'm just choosing this black color of her hair and then duplicating that layer and pasting it a few times so it's more opaque and you can't see through it. And then I'm just refining that edge by blending the color into it and uh, I use the red filter you saw was just so I could see the parts that are kind of there that aren't supposed to be there, that are partially transparent. Uh, it just lets you see things that are not very visible. Uh, in this section, I'm just going over all of the parts of the hair and eventually all of the parts of the armor where the edge isn't quite cut directly on the edge, or I need to move the edge, or maybe there's highlight there that I don't want anymore. I'm, I'm trying to change the image as little as possible from where it was originally made, except I do need to rebuild all of the parts that are behind things that I cut out. So starting with this shoulder, I'm redoing the underneath area behind those purple things. And then we move down into the legs, and I have to essentially erase the bow and arrow from this image. So to do that, I'm just smudging the area into the shape that I think it's supposed to be. The leg armor comes down in these little L shapes, and then I'm just pushing down this purple area and this leathery type pants area. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The bow is going to be put back in front, and it's going to be blocking all of the things that I'm drawing, so it's just there. Just in case the bow moves, I might make it move more, and then you would see that part behind. So the rest of this section is more of the same. It's just cutting out this final area, and then I'm going to be going over all of the parts that I need to fix the edges for. I'm going to be going over all of the parts on the inside, anything else that I can fix, any more objects that I have to replace, um, 
I'm going to be trying to replicate the textures of the armor and push everything into place and continue it down. And it's more of just fixing everything so that it looks correct. Like I'm, I'm never going to be able to draw the parts that the artist had not done. I am not able to copy their art style, but I can make a fairly okay approximation just by smudging what is already there. The last layer we have to fix is the background. So to do that, I'm making a selection of all of my other layers to select the character, expanding the selection a little bit, and then using Photoshop's Content-Aware Fill to just fill in the big hole. And that'll give us a kind of crummy approximation. There's weird mountains and trees and bushes and things. So then I'm just going in and kind of make all the parts that don't make sense. I'm trying to make them make a little bit more sense. Uh, extend the mountain down the side, remove all the weird bro bushes, fix the base of the mountain, uh, and make everything look like the background. One thing I didn't cover is this little button here. And I'm not using it right now, but I did want to point it out. Uh, this is called the Alpha Lock, I think, something like that. It makes it so that if you were brushing on this layer, you can't go outside of it. You, If the layer does not exist there, so if you make a cut and make the layer not exist there, and you were to paint, you would only paint on the parts that exist. So with that button, you can smudge into the edge, and it won't keep going. It will just make a hard line, and you could... For example, you can smudge a highlight off of something by locking the alpha and then smudging over it. So with that, I am done all of the steps I need to do in Photoshop, and the next thing I have to do is export all of these layers so that I can bring them into Wallpaper Engine. Now what I'm doing here is selecting the layer, contracting the selection by one pixel, inverting the selection, so I'm selecting everything except for that item one pixel inside the item, and then blurring it. So I'm blurring the very most outer pixel of the image. You have to do that because uh, Wallpaper Engine and Photoshop and PNG images, they don't play very nice together. If you don't do this with PNG images, uh, they'll get this white line around them in some areas. So the easiest way to fix it is to just blur it. You can also use targofiles.tga, but I personally prefer PNG files. Okay, so now we are working in Wallpaper Engine. I'm going to import all of these files, all of these layers, and add a couple project tweaks to set the background color, just so it's easier to look at. And I'm going to start by adding some background movement. So I'm using this snow system. Uh, it's the blizzard, or high wind snow preset, whatever it's called, snowstorm. I actually only want the wind part of it, so I'm deleting the actual snow out of it and just using the wind. I'm then adding the parallax snow and making a minor edit to the uh, particle system by replacing the image with a snow texture that I happen to have from an earlier project. Um, and then positioning that in where I want it. One quick little tip, well, not a tip, but one thing I'm doing here that you might not notice is I'm actually splitting the snow particles into two separate systems. Technically, there's three. So there's the foreground snow, which is going to be closer to you, larger snow, and there's going to be fewer of them, but they're going to be kind of close and apparent in the camera. Behind the character, there is smaller snow that goes back into like a vanishing point, so it, it'll look like there's depth to the snow. And then the third layer is the snow wind, so the environment effects are three layers, and then there's also going to be a blur layer that kind of makes it so the background is slightly out of focus, just to add some pop to the character. Now I just want to add a little bit of movement to the trees. Uh, it is going to warp the mountains, but it's subtle enough that you only really see it when it's sped up like this in the video. You wouldn't really notice it if you're looking otherwise, or if you're looking at the animation itself. Uh, and then here is the blur layer, so that just makes the background a little bit blurry. And now I'm going to play around with some light effects. So I want god rays. They're probably my favorite effect in all of Wallpaper Engine. They're just 
nice rays. Can't really describe them any other way. Um, it makes it look like the sun's shining, even though it's a blizzard out. And I just really like them. I add them into a lot of my animations. Starting with the character animations, I'm adding the water waves effect to the little purple ribbons. Just makes it look like they're blowing in the wind. They're pretty easy to set up. Um, I'm just making it so that the top where the ribbons anchor into the armor is pretty much a zero value by painting black in the mask, and that'll make it so that it's not actually going to move very much where it's attached to the armor. And then the same thing on the hair, just using the water waves effect to add a little bit of movement, just so it looks like the wind's blowing, because she is standing in a blizzard. And then uh, I'm going to add a bunch of facial animations. I want to add blinking. I have a video on blinking if you want to see that, because this is going to go by pretty quick. Um, I'm also going to add a little kind of smirk smile and just some eyebrow mu movement and a little bit of eye movement. Just some kind of random facial movements so that she's not kind of just staring blankly forward. And the final animation is going to be the main character movement. Now this is different from what I normally do. If you're familiar with my animations, they're more of an up and down movement normally. Uh, this character is more of a safe for work animation, so she's kind of just swaying back and forth in the wind. I only have one layer of animations on this character. She's only moving left and right. I do intend to make a video that covers more multi-layer animations, so up and down, left and right. I, I have videos on this already, but they don't really demonstrate what you can do with it. You can do a lot of really cool stuff by stacking uh, shakes in the right way. But So all I'm doing here is essentially making the left and right movement, and then copying that movement to each layer. So. Because the body layer is moving left and right, the arm layers have to move left and right at the same speed, at the same magnitude. So do the ribbons, so does the back arm. Everything has to move at the same rate. Uh, once you have everything lined up, you can use shake phase to offset certain parts. So her arms are going to move slightly differently. Uh, I'm making her head move slightly differently. I'm making her bow arm move slightly differently. Uh, just to add a little bit of variance to the movement. I'm also going to add a second shake to her back arm and a second shake to her bow arm. So you'll see I'm shrinking the bow arm down here. That's just so I can fit the entire thing. To, uh, I can fit the entire bow inside the maximum size of the brush tool. So if you can't make the brush tool bigger, make the image smaller just by changing the scale values. Uh, and then you can have a uniform movement on that. And I have basically all of the character animations done here. I added a little twist to her head, so she's kind of turning her neck a little bit. And now I have all of the animations on that I'm going to have for this character. So again, I will at some point, I don't know when, be making a video covering multi-layer stacking and, um, like layers interacting with each other. It's kind of a weird way of saying it, but if you're familiar with my animations, uh, yeah, there are some things you can do that is kind of cool, and hopefully I can find some safe-for-work YouTube-friendly examples so I can show that. Um, the rest of this video is just me fixing little parts that don't seem to line up properly and tweaking the already the animations that are already there, just making them slightly more how I want them. But otherwise, it's basically done. Um, hopefully this helps. It shows the process and slightly better than some of the VODs I have on here are like four hours long, so nobody's going to watch those anyways.